Do you suck up playing instruments in time just like me? Well, let's get that fixed in an instant. Oh yeah. So as I said in the intro, I'm gonna show you how to correct your recorded audio in a very, very easy and quick way. So we can tighten up the performance at just the click of a button. We're also gonna have a look at some other features around this subject, so stay tuned to the end. Okay, so let's get into it. So you're gonna need Cubase Artist or Pro for this to have the audio warp feature. Let's just see what we're working with straight away. This is a bit of guitar playing, which is just a little bit out of time here and there. I've got the metronome on so you can hear the timing. Here we go. So you can hear that's a little bit out of time in places. So we can rectify that no problem. Just incidentally, you'll notice that Cubase has automatically detected the hit points. And if I click on it and make it black, you can see that much more clearly. And if that's annoying for you, then I'll show you where to turn that off. Just go to Edit Preferences and under Editing and then Audio, you can turn that off here. Enable Automatic Hit Point Detection. But it's quite useful in this case because I'm going to show you a really quick way to quantize this without having to apply hit points manually. I'm also going to show you how to do it manually as well. So all we need to do is press this button up here, audio warp quantize on or off. Just make sure that is on. Select your quantize value. I find that eighth notes work really well, but feel free to experiment there. So just make sure the event is highlighted. Come up to the quantize panel or you can hit Q on your keyboard and just hit quantize here. Just keep your eye on this waveform and you'll notice that it will change slightly as the warping is done for you. Yeah, there you go. So all moved a little bit. Let's listen to that now. now perfectly in time. So let's have a look at the warp markers. So we'll double click it and you'll see the audio warp has already been turned on for you because Cubase has done that automatically. And if I just zoom out a little bit, you can see all the warp markers that have automatically been done for you at the touch of a button. Pretty nifty, huh? That's so quick to quantize audio and get your playing back in time. Okay, so that's the automatic way of doing it and the quickest way of doing it. I'm just gonna undo that. And we'll have a look at doing this manually. So you wanna to go to hit points this time. And we have a threshold setting over here where we can decide how many of these peaks we want to include. In other words, which sections we want to include. And this is done by peak. So threshold, if you put it right up, you'll see that you get less and less sections. It will pick up less and less of the peaks until you get none. So you start bringing it down. Maybe you just want to pick up these huge peaks here. Or bring the threshold down a bit more and it starts picking up more until you get to the number that you want. And about there seems to be right. We picked up this one, this one. We don't really want this tiny one down here, so that's correct. We've got this section, this section, this section, and all the way across. It's pretty much got all the peaks, apart from this one here, perhaps. and it's not picking it up. But I can show you how to manually change that a bit later. Intensity is the same thing, but it does it by intensity rather than looking for peaks. So a similar thing is happening, but I tend to find it works a little bit better on threshold. So the threshold filters the hit points by peaks and the intensity filters them by intensity. So let's carry on down the list. We're going to have a look at all of these. So minimum length, I think this was on 20 as default. This is just, you can change this value here so you get a minimum length of slice. So we're going to create slices in a minute and the length of these sections basically. 
And if it's picking up sections that are too short, this is where you can just change that. So all the way up to 370 milliseconds or more than that. So you're getting longer distances between the hit points. But it's probably best just to keep this on 20 or 30, depending on your style of music, of course. You can also filter the hit points by musical position by using this beats function here. So let's just put this on something extreme. So let's say quarter notes. You can see now that we've got filter points or hit points rather only on quarter notes. So we'll just leave this as all. We want all the peaks to be detected. Nothing to do with musical position in this particular scenario anyway. So let's just zoom in a little bit here. So I'm just going to show you can actually move these hit points around. But first of all, you need to click edit hit points. And now we can not only move them around, we can actually play each section because we get a speaker icon. So that's actually got two uh, peaks to it. So we can add an extra hit point in here in a second. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so you can play each section and you can move around these hit points just by hovering over it and obviously getting the marker there. So you can move that to there if you want. Just undo that. So, and if there's a hit point here you don't want, you can just shift click it. So you've got, as soon as you press down shift, you get disable hit points. Just undo that. And you can add one in, which is what we're going to do here as well by holding down Alt or Option. And you get insert hit point. So. So probably somewhere around here. So we'll add a hit point there. So we've now got this extra bit in here, which is what we wanted. So what's the point of having all these kind of slices or regions? I'll show you. First of all, once you've got all your hit points correctly, you can still go and do the quantize thing, which is what we did at the start of this video, because the automatic version may not have picked up your hit points correctly. So this is how you do it manually and redo it. But you can also do other things. So let's have a look down the left hand side here and look at all these options. So create slices. This slices everything up within the audio event. And you can now import this into let's say Groove Agent and map all these different guitar bits or if it's drums or if it's vocals, you can put them all onto the different pads in Groove Agent. I'll show you that. But let's do it with uh, this vocal actually because it'll be a bit of a better example so let's just quickly go and do that now so you've got way too many hit points in here so let's just make sure we just get the ones we want and let's do minimum length let's put the minimum length up a little bit and let's say we want all these slices of the vocal and let's just create slices. And what we're going to do is just add an instrument track, add Groove Agent. Neat little trick this for vocal remixing. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just drag this sliced version now. Just quickly show you, we've got all the vocal slices now within this audio event. And we're just going to drag those slices onto drum pad one like so. And now we have all the vocals slices across all these pads. So you can play this on your keyboard. So that's the sort of thing you can do. You can mess around with vocal slices. If they were all different drums, obviously you could put different drums on your Groove Agent pads as well. So slices is really good fun, actually. So just going to undo that. And go back to where we were. Going to undo the slices as well. Let's go back into it and carry on down the list. So we can create a groove. So what's create a groove? So... This guitar is slightly out of time, right? But you may want to use that timing. Maybe it's a bit swingy, a bit sloppy, whatever. And you may want to use that timing as a quantized reference. So instead of having everything, let's just show you. So instead of having everything exactly to the grid, like quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenths, you can actually create 
a quantized setting out of this sloppy timing or lazy timing, if you like. And I've actually already done this. It's this one down here, but I'll just show you how to do it. You double click it and you create a groove. And then when you go to your quantized settings, it's down here and it's already selected. So that way you can then quantize, let's say you had a load of drums in here, you could then quantize your drums to the same lazy timing as the guitar. Pretty cool. You can create markers from the hit points. So again, just go back to the original project window. You can now see all these markers have been introduced onto a marker track at every single hit point. So we've got loads and loads of markers. And you can see all the marker positions down the left hand side. Now, I'm not actually sure how useful that is. Obviously it is useful, but I'm not actually sure what for. So if you have any ideas, then please leave a comment below and let us know your thoughts. So let's carry on. I'll just undo that. We can also create regions from all the hit points. So again, on the right hand side, you have all the regions here with the start and end points. Now, what are regions, you might be asking? So regions are just parts of the audio event that you want to highlight, or perhaps you think that's quite an important part of the audio event as a whole, that little bit, and you can create a region. And say you want to bounce down this particular region, you can just drag it out of here, the region list, onto a new channel. Maybe this one as well. And and then you can just bounce them down if you want to, you know, and make a new track out of them. So that's another thing you can do, make regions. You can create events. So you can create a whole new event. So let's go back and see what's happened there. So now Cubase has sliced up all of the audio one event into many, many different events. So they're all separate now, which could be very, very useful as well. Uh, depending on where your hit points are. Obviously, if it hasn't done it how you want it to do it, you just go back and change the hit points and do it again. But you can now, you know, you're now free to just take out tiny little bits. If you want, undo, undo, undo. Let's carry on down the list. Create warp markers. Well, that's similar to where we were before. As soon as you click that, you notice that audio warp is turned on like the automatic version did before. And you'll see that all your warp markers are in here now. And again, you can move these around and delete them and add new ones and all the rest of it. What you need to do here though is just click free warp and let's zoom in a little bit. And now you can move these around and stretch those or just putting an extra bit there and just stretch that one bit like that, for example. So free warp is absolutely brilliant if you want to get right into the nitty gritty and get it done, you know, perfectly. Groovy, some pretty cool stuff going on here. So let's turn off free warp and just go back. Where were we, hit points? And create MIDI notes. So we can create MIDI notes as well from the hit points. This one is not quite so useful as the one I'm about to show you. So obviously you can change all these things here, the length of the MIDI note, what pitch it's going to be on, but they're all going to come out as C1, so that's why it's not that great, unless they're drums or something like that. You can change the velocity and, and where do you want it to spit the MIDI information out. First selected track, or a new MIDI track, or the project keyboard. So maybe a new MIDI track, and I'll just show you what that's done. So now we have hit points, or MIDI notes, I should say, at every hit point, but they're all the same note. Okay, but here's one, if you wanna go even further on that, if you want to, let me just undo that. Here's a really cool feature. If you wanna take the MIDI information from here, but with note values as well, then what you need to do is go to Vary Audio, Edit Vary Audio, this is really cool this bit. Just turn off that right zone a second. So now we've analyzed the guitar and we've got pitch information now. And now what you can do is go to functions and extract MIDI. Again, you've got a few options here, um, but 
let's just go to new MIDI track again. And now we have the guitar as MIDI, but with note information. So all we've got to do now is let's say add an instrument, add vital or retrolog, anything like any synth will do. Let's just do retrolog. And it's going to be pretty nasty. We'll just leave it on the saw wave. And just copy this or drag this MIDI down. And here we have the MIDI information of the guitar now being played as a synth. And these little rogue sort of notes in here are just where that guitar is just a little bit, you know, got some sort of buzz notes and stuff like that. So it's even picked up those. But obviously you can just get rid of those. And you can add in a note and obviously in, where anything's missing, you can just add that in or move it around, of course. So that is pretty damn cool as well. Oh yeah. Okay guys, that is it. If you want to see more videos, let us know below in the comments what you want to see. Let us know if you like the video. If you do like the video, you know what to do. Do us a favor, click that thumbs up, press subscribe so you get notified about more. Hit the bell, all that rubbish. Ding, ding. Uh, and we'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye bye. So the threshold filters the peaks by, oh for fuck's sake.